Welcome to Succession Stories. I'm your host, Lori Barkman, founder of Small.Big. As an exit value planning and M&A advisor, I call myself a business transition Sherpa. My mission is guiding entrepreneurs on ways to build value in your business and then benefit by letting it go. On this show, we spotlight the theme of transitions, not only to reward you for your hard work, but also to ensure that you look back on your succession without regret. Catch all the episodes and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And be sure to visit SuccessionStories.com to sign up for our newsletter. Here's to your success. Kurt J. Lesker Company was founded in 1954 from humble beginnings. Now over 400 employees, KJLC is a global manufacturer of vacuum technology solutions for clients like NASA. This conversation was with third generation leaders, three siblings, Kurt Lesker IV, Kristen Lesker Eisel, and Jenna Lesker Lloyd. In 2015, their father was diagnosed with cancer and passed away within just seven months. While the Lesker family had done some estate planning and held regular family meetings, they hadn't done formal business succession planning. With support from their executive team, KJLC successfully transitioned to the next generation of leaders. Listen in as the Lesker family share their personal and professional challenges of dealing with unexpected death and succession. Hey everyone, welcome to Succession Stories. This is going to be a lot of fun. I have three siblings who have joined me today from the Kurt J. Lesker Company. And there's so much to talk about, there's so much to learn. So Kurt, Kristen, and Jenna, thank you, each of you sincerely for being here today. I would love for each of you to just give a brief introduction because I cannot do all three of you justice. And we'll learn a little bit more about the company in a little bit. So. Kristen, why don't you go first? Sure. Hi, thanks so much for having us on today. We're really excited to talk about the business and our succession, and hopefully we'll have a great time. So I'm Kristen Lesker. I am the global HR manager at the business. I run everything around HR, safety, diversity, equity, and inclusion, talent acquisition, benefits, payroll, you know, everything that really revolves around people. I've been at the business now for about 15 years. And prior to the business, I worked at a couple different places, and I also got my bachelor's degree from Duquesne University for psychology and communications. I also hold my PHR right now, so I'm really excited, and thanks for having us on today. Absolutely, and I should mention that you're the oldest of the three siblings, which is why in the batting order, you went first. <laughs> I am. I am the oldest of the three. So. And so next up would be the second born, which is Kurt. Kurt, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Lori, for having us on the show. Uh, Kurt Lester, the middle child, sometimes called the golden child by my sister, (laughs) but uh, I'm the president and CEO. I've been with the organization for 15 years. I uh, got started, actually, my first job was as a janitor, as an intern, worked my way up through industrial engineering, then running global quality. I moved over to Asia for three years, which was an awesome experience, went into sales, and then in 2015, became the president. So really excited to be here and talk a little bit with you. Thanks, Kurt. And certainly last but not least, the youngest here is Jenna. Yeah, save the best for last, right? (laughs) That's right. Yeah. So my name is Jenna Lesker Lloyd. I am the youngest of the three siblings. I have been working at the organization now for around nine years. I'm the director of finance and strategy. I manage our finance department, quality, sustainability, and strategic facilities. My background's in finance accounting. I've got my bachelor's in finance accounting, my master's in accounting and information analysis from Lehigh University, CPA, love numbers. I could talk to you about Excel spreadsheets all day. Spent a bit of time in our UK office for about six months there working on operational excellence. Just really have a passion for for numbers and for quality. So happy to be here and excited to talk to you. Awesome. So you collectively are the third generation, which is kind of nice because there's three of you. It makes it fun. And and we'll talk more about your family in a second. So this is a third generation business. You've had some transitions. We're going to talk about that as well. And let's, let's just learn a little bit more about the company. So Jenna, what does the company do? How big is the company? You know, things like that. Sure, sure. So we're a leader in, in the design and manufacturing of vacuum technology solutions for research and production applications. 
from the simplest of components uh, and fittings to intricate vacuum chambers and precision computer controlled deposition systems. So what does that mean, right? We, we like to say that we enable technology for a better world. So our customers are gonna be doing really interesting end applications, whether they're doing research on the next OLED display, LED, they're working on the sensors in your vehicles, and we provide them the tools and the capabilities to do this next level research, to give us the next thin film battery, to give us the smart pill that you're gonna take and uh, you're gonna consume and that your doctor will get information out. So that's what we do. We're a global company. We're headquartered here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we have offices as well, European headquarters in Hastings, UK, and Shanghai, China. We're uh, about 420 employees strong. We've got some other offices throughout, throughout the US and, and throughout Europe and Asia. So, Wow, that's really incredible. And we want to learn more about that growth story. But So you're a global business and pretty technical company. And I also want to just give kind of a shout out to Kurt because he and I initially talked about, I was going to interview him one-on-one. And he said, you know, I, I really would like to include my siblings. So the idea for the three of you being, being with me today is, is really Kurt. And that says a lot, obviously, from what he thinks of you together as siblings and in this family business. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with the audience. And, and I don't know if both of you knew that, but I wanted to share that with you as well. Well, yeah. we really like each other a lot. I mean, I think sometimes you, you hear about family businesses and there's, a, you know, there could be a bit of a struggle working with your siblings, but we actually really like each other. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time in work together, but we spend a lot of time outside of work together. We just, we, we really enjoy each other. Yeah. And we always really like to support one another and see each one excel and succeed. So I think that's probably been one of the most exciting things just about working together is seeing each other in maybe a different light than a lot of people get to see their siblings. But, you know, I watch my brother and sister excel every day and they're just so great at what they do and so strong. And we really celebrate successes together. And so, again, when Kurt asked us to do this, of course, you know, we just really appreciated it because he's always looking for ways to help push us forward. And we're always looking for ways to help push him forward too. So we definitely are excited about today. Now, I know things aren't always kumbaya and there's conflict because we're people. <laughs> and so we may, we may uh, have some conversations about that. But on, on the people side, I thought, Kristen, not only because of your role in global HR, but also because you've worked in the company longer than your other two siblings. So you have the benefit of that. <laughs> but if you could talk about the people side of this company and just share a little bit about the people that you work with from the employee standpoint, and then also from the customers, who do you serve and what do they do? Right. So, you know, our people are amazing. To me, we have a very unique culture. And I think a lot of companies say that, but if you really were to talk to our team members and you would ask them, you know, what they love about their job, people is always the number one answer. And we really have a great culture, family culture. We have our spirit values, which are sustainability, passion, integrity, respectful, innovation, and team. And those are values that our people came up with. They were not values that were given from the top down. We did a grassroots effort to come up with those values. So they're not just on our wall, but they're ingrained in who we are. And when we make decisions, when all of our people make decisions, we go back to our spirit values. You know, we've been so lucky to have such amazing team members throughout the year that have stuck with us. We have a lot of team members that have been here a really long time. Our executive team has such a good mix of people who've been with the company for 30 years, the people who've been with the company for five years. But, you know, we're so strong and we keep getting stronger every single year. And I think that, you know, they're all really smart and intelligent and driven in their own right. So we're so lucky to have them, you know, and again, I always say if the people are happy, the customers are happy. So to me, you know, as long as we keep doing the right thing for our team and we keep this amazing culture that we have, it's going to spread to our customers. And I think that's why we have such good relationships with our customers and relationship building is key to our success. You know, when you look at the, who we're partnering it with and the customers that we're serving, you know, as Jenna said, a lot of these customers, they are just moving technology forward. They're changing the world. And we want to be there to help change the world with them. 
you know, we don't want to just sell you something. We want to partner with you. We want to help you innovate. When you know, when you say, hey, I can't do this. Help me figure out how to do it. Our team, they want to do that. We're ready to do it. So when you look at, you know, we serve, again, optics, OLED, semiconductor, UHV, a variety of different markets. But really what they're doing is they're creating a cell phone. They're creating a smartphone. So every time you look at your smartphone, think of us. We helped our customers do that. They're creating flat screen TVs. When you walk into your house and you take off your really cool aviator sunglasses, guess what? That was done in a vacuum or, you know, everyone's washing their hands now. Let's wash our hands under a faucet. That faucet, it didn't happen without vacuum. But what's really neat, I think, are things like cancer research, you know, the innovations that's happening in the medical world and space. I mean, you watch SpaceX put a rocket into space, you know, our company vacuum we help to make that happen. The Mars rover landing. I mean, we have launch parties. We celebrate what our customers do. So to me, we're just doing amazing things. And it all comes down to the people. Technologies are only advanced with really smart and intelligent people. We happen to have a ton of those at our facility and on our team. And then they, you know, help our customers enable the technology that really is changing our world today. Thanks for sharing that. So let's switch over to Kurt because I know people are probably curious about the company history. We've learned about where you are today, which is a really interesting industry that you're in, and you're serving really interesting customers. But I'm sure that when the company was founded, maybe the business was a little bit different. So why don't you walk us through a little bit of the company history and generation one, gen two, and then we'll talk a little bit more about how you guys as gen three transition, but let's start with the history. Sure, sure Lori. Yeah, first, listening to my sisters here talk, I'm just, I feel lucky to be related to them. They're very capable young ladies and doing a heck of a job for us. The beginning of the company was very humble beginnings. Uh, people think, oh, Kurt J. Lester Company, and I'm, I'm Kurt J. Lester the fourth. The company was started by the second. And they think, wow, he must have had a big ego if he named the company after himself. But what really happened was uh, my grandfather, our grandfather was laid off from his job. He was a sales representative and he was laid off and he didn't know what he wanted to do next, but he knew he wanted to be in control of his own destiny. So he went into, he said, I'm going to start my own company. Great. Went in to register his company. They said, what's the name of your company? He said, I don't know. He said, okay, well, what products are you going to sell? He said, I don't know. And they said, well, just name it after yourself. Then you can sell whatever you want. So that's how the Kurt J. Lester company was born. And our grandfather was a true uh, entrepreneur. I mean, he would do anything he could to try and make money to service customers. So through our history, while we're a vacuum technology company today, through our history, we've sold office furniture, we've sold tractors, we've sold chemistry equipment. And what would happen is he'd say, okay, we, we want to outfit our office with furniture. And he'd go get a price on furniture. And they said, here's your price. He said, well, what about if I'm a distributor? They said, well, here's your better price. He said, okay, we're now a distributor of Han office furniture. We're going to start the Lester office products division. And then it's born. Of course, over the years, thankfully, we, we focused in and we started to divest those other businesses. But if you look at through the 60s, through the space race, through the development of, of computers and televisions, Vacuum technology really started to take center stage. And the exciting thing for us today is just all the different applications that Jenna and Kristen talked about. If you look at the history, being that this is about succession, Kurt II, he was the first, I'm going to say the first 35 years of this business were just scraping to get by. I mean, every year, are we going to have enough money to pay people? Are we going to be profitable, make a little bit of money, lose a little bit of money? And, and that was a real challenge, as I think it is for a lot of companies that start up. In 1976, actually, before my father joined, our mother joined the company, 1976. She's here three years before our father. And she's involved in the organization now, she'll go on to a 45-year career in, as the head of IT, but she was doing everything, as you typically wear many hats in a small company. 
anything she could help with, whether it was writing board reports, whether it was sending out invoices to customers, she would do it. Three years later, our father joins the company as president in 1979. Two years after that, his father moves out to California from Pittsburgh, and he becomes the chairman. My father's the president. My mother becomes the vice president of IT. And my father uh, has a sister and a brother, and they're also part owners. They're on our board of directors. And I think that as we get into our story with, with our parents, I don't think they talked as much as a family about succession and what that meant and what it would look like when somebody passed away. But they really did a great job working through this because a lot of companies don't even survive to the third generation. And they did a great job when, when our grandfather passed away in 1999. You know, they made sure that the company was stable and that it had the right leadership team in place to be successful into the future. So that's kind of the, the generation one to generation two. And, and then we can get into the generation two to generation three. Yeah, so yeah hum- humble beginnings, but exciting how it's progressed. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing that. Let me ask you a question about the G2 transitions. So was that a foregone conclusion that that your father was going to take over as president? Was that a smooth transition? It was not a foregone conclusion, no. And there were some challenges through that transition. I, I think the communication was not as not as open as it could have been, and it did create some family conflict. That conflict lasted a little while, but thankfully, it's all been resolved. Thankfully, those difficult conversations have been had, and we've gotten to a much better place as a, as a larger family unit. You mentioned earlier in the description, Jenna, of how big this company is today. So, Kurt, do you know back then relative size? Was it about half the size of, I don't know your, I don't know your in, revenues, in, but just a, your employee size or some dimensionality just to compare? Yeah, in, in 1976, so the company started in 1954. In 1976, when our mother joined, uh, the company is $2 million and has 12 people. So that kind of gives you an idea of how things have evolved. Uh, and now we have, as Jenna said, over 400 people. Uh, we're much, much larger than that now. And a big part of that, I'd say a big part of that growth story has to do with our father's vision. Uh, he was not He had his MBA, but he did not focus on, okay, what is the return on investment? What's my profitability year on year? His was more, how are we going to be customer centric? How are we going to grow and become a global organization? So he he decided we need an office in the UK. We need an office. Actually, we put an office in Budapest, Hungary before the, the wall came down really early on, opened up an office in 2007 in China. And there were a lot of difficult conversations back then between generation one, generation two, the other board members saying, we have to shut this down. We have to shut this down. It's not profitable. And he just kept on his vision, very committed to it, unwavering. And we're very thankful that he was because we couldn't be who we are today without a lot of risk and a lot of fortitude to just see the vision of what we could become. Yeah, what I would just add to the, the story, just to give it a little bit more context, is we, as Kurt mentioned, he started out as a manufacturer's rep. Then it was a distributor. Then it was a national distributor, right? Then it became a global distributor. Then we started manufacturing. Um, then we started building uh, full deposition systems. So we've taken this progressive steps every every um, at every point, we've, we've just kind of grown our, our our product offerings and what we our capabilities. But it definitely happened, you know, over time, taking risk and seeing how it went. Um, and typically, those risks were, were well worth it. Yeah, and then, and that's something common that you hear about, right? With Gen One building it, getting it off the ground, trying to figure out, as you were describing with Kurt the second, that he did a number of different things. He made some pivots. He was trying to figure out the market and where the growth opportunities were. And then when your dad came into the business, who's Kurt the third, that he was trying to take it to that next level. He was taking it global and it did have some risks, but then obviously had rewards. So we know his name. We haven't mentioned your mom's name. I think we should. Your mom's name is? Cindy Lester. Cindy. And she's an important part of this story. So just want to acknowledge her there. So she had joined the company. She was by his side for a lot of years because she's still part of the company today, correct? 
Yeah, actually, Cindy, you know, the interesting thing, Cindy's kind of the unsung hero or the person in the background. And she's always been pretty comfortable with that. But she is currently now our chair, man, chairwoman of the board. Um, and she's doing an excellent job. You know, when our father passed away in 2015, she took on that role. And she's really been working great with the board, the executive team, um, to help continue to push the business forward. But the interesting thing about that story that Kurt happened to leave out, and I'm happy to just jump in and, and uh, <laughs> you know, correct that, but was that uh, our father, Kurt the Third, actually asked Cindy to come to the business and decide if that was the direction that they wanted to take the family. So he really valued making sure that she was on board and that she was ready to go because they were going to work together for the next, you know, 35 years in the business. And so what people don't always realize is that every risk that he was taking, she was there behind him risk managing while he was pushing <laughs> forward um, from a, a, a visionary standpoint. But yeah, Kurt does an excellent job of, of really going through that story. But Cindy definitely is a huge part of the company. And um, really, she's kind of just like our, our, um, our guiding light, you know, she's, she's there to help us through with everything and support us, which is awesome. Yeah, I read an article recently, I think that your company had on your blog, which acknowledged her contributions in the company. It had a great photo of the three of you with her. And I know we, we thought about asking her to come on and, and maybe that'll be another episode with, with the four of you. <laughs> that could be fun. No, but she, she's here. She's here with us in spirit. And so, and so is your father. So let's switch to talk about Kurt the third. And he did pass away. And so Kristen, you know, you talked about that 2015. I'm going to go back to Kurt because I think Kurt for you and your transition here, as we talk about from G2 to G3, you know, you're, you're a key part of this story and your personal experience. And obviously Kristen and Jenna, I'd love for you guys to chime in as well about your feelings in this time. But Kurt, just take us back. What was happening in 2015? Yeah, uh, in 2015, for me, I was the vice president of sales and I had just recently become the vice president of sales. Uh, I was in Shanghai on a business trip and I remember getting a phone call from my father. And this is, this is kind of in the middle of my night. So I'm wondering, okay, what, what's going on here? And he said, I need to talk to you. Uh, he told me that he had cancer, sarcoma, uh, soft tissue cancer, and that he didn't know much else. You know, he just said, hey, I, I have something I need to, we need to figure this out. So, okay, do you want me to come back? No, no, no. I mean, he's very clear. There's nothing you can do. Stay there. So I finished my business trip, came home, and it was really the next seven months. He passed away in October. The, the next seven months were very challenging for the family. Uh, we all, I think we all expected, because he was such a larger-than-life figure, that he was going to live forever, that somehow he was going to beat this. There's no way that that could, that could take him. And he did everything he could, and we did everything we could to try and get past it. But unfortunately, he succumbed in, in October. But through that time, I mean, we had business meetings in his hospital room. I mean, he was very connected to the business throughout. Uh, we talked a lot about things as a family. We had set up, I'd say we set ourselves up for success by years prior, I mean, five plus years prior, having monthly family planning meetings putting in place a succession plan, putting in, in place an estate plan so that in the event something would happen, it wouldn't be chaos. And really credit to my family and our, our leadership team, our executive team and our board of directors. They were very supportive when the time came and it looked like it was getting near the end. We talked about then transitioning me early to the role as president and CEO. Uh, probably would have been a couple years from then, but making that transition early. And I, I didn't want to do that without the support of my family, the board of directors and the leadership team. And thankfully they were all very supportive of it and have been ever since. So that was really, really important for me. I think when you're taking on a role like that, there's definitely things that go through your mind. You know, am I, am I ready for this? Is this right? Am I the right person for this? And 
when you have people around you that are building you up, it, it definitely helps you to feel confident as well. How old were you then, 2015? I knew you were going to ask me difficult questions. Um, I think, <laughs> How old I think each was, of you? Was, How old were each of you? I was 32. You? I think I was 32 at the time. 32. And how about for you, Kristen? I was 35. I was 35. And Jenna? Well, that makes me 29. 29. <laughs> so you were all pretty young at the time to lose your dad. And I'm so sorry that you lost him and, you know, that he left you at a relatively early young age for himself and Cindy too, and the whole, the whole family. How you adjusted and how the company adjusted, I think, is really so compelling because so many companies do struggle. It was a relatively short amount of time, right? You said seven months from when he was diagnosed to when he died, but you had you had been proactive. There was some planning. There was, you know, you had governance. There was a board that had been talking about succession. So it wasn't an easy thing by any stretch. But Kurt, you they had been talking to you about you know, development, right? And that the one day the vision was for you to take over, but would you ever have imagined at 32, you'd be running this company? No, no, I, I didn't think at 32, I'd be in that position. And if you, if you knew our father, I didn't think even when I became president, that he was still going to have his hands and everything. And I remember talking to him as it was getting closer to the end. We, we both, we both were kind of joking around with each other and it said, Hey, dad, like, hey, th here's a good thing. You're not going to be in my hair. You know, you're not going to be second guessing every decision that I make. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's a big benefit of this. And we also said that it's, he's had such a great career and there were no regrets. There were no regrets. I think Jen and Kristen would agree. It's not like there was anything left unsaid. I mean, I'm, very, I'm actually very thankful that we had seven months to work through that transition because we got to say everything, we got to talk through the whole situation. And at the end, I mean, he would have, he always said, I want to work, he wanted to work until he died. I mean, his father worked until he died. He wanted to do the same thing, and, and he did. But he, he just thought it would be much later. We all thought it would be much later in life. Yeah. yeah Chris, the one, well, ahead, the one thing I would add to the succession story, so we're, we really focused a lot on the family succession, but the reason the business succeeded throughout that was because of our executive management team. I mean, we have, I would say, the best executive management team in the industry. I mean, when when Kurt was uh, Kurt the the third was focusing on um, his cancer and and focusing on and on getting better, you know, the business didn't skip a beat because we just have such strong leadership and we are running a business, right? Not everything everything didn't have to go through Kurt. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't wasn't a one man show, right? He built a business with just excellent, excellent leadership. And um, it, it, that was one of the things that I was just very proud of that he did um, in the business was he created a real business with a real leadership team. Yeah. And Kristen, what are your memories from that time? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely difficult. Um, you know, on a personal side, I, 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 I have and had three kids at the time. I was trying to manage work um, personal and the business and, and trying to spend as much time as I could with my father. But for me, I, I agree completely. You know, there were no regrets. If he would have passed away in a week, you know, he would have left us in a really great spot. He was really thoughtful um, about having family planning meetings and getting us to work through what people <clears throat> always think is, you know, you're going to work through it after they're gone. But really, everything you need to work through is, is when people are here, because a lot of the things that happen is your emotions become very heightened when, when this happens, right? Everybody kind of deals with death in a different way. So he knew that because he had gone through that and he wanted us to be able to come together and, you know, kind of mold together to be successful as a family and as a business. And so, for me, I mean, the toughest thing was just losing him and not having him there anymore. But I felt so confident with Kurt going into the CEO role. I still do. You know, Kurt has always been successful. He's really been able to connect with people. And he's just a great leader. 
and I'm happy to have him as my boss. I mean, you know, believe me, there are times where I can really give him a hard time. <laughs> Do you ever you know, just want to go up to him and give him a noogie yeah, or something? You know? yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. so we have our moments, but overall, you know, there were, I worked with my father for 10 years and I am so thankful for that. He really taught me how to connect with people. You know, we called him a chameleon. He could adapt, he could adjust, he could connect with anyone on any level at any time. And people loved him for that. And they should have because it was genuine. He just wanted to be kind, joyful, create a fun environment. And Kurt is the same way. Um, but what Kurt, I think, really brings to the table, it's a little different, you know, as we're moving into the next generation is this idea of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I mean, Kurt is... A, he is such a um, champion of this in our business and um, his own life. And I think that he really allows for everyone to move up and be successful. Um, and I know that Jenna and I and some others have, you know, worked with him along the way on that, but he does an excellent job. And so, you know, in 2015, like Jenna said, our leadership team was on point. They were running the business. They were doing amazing things. Kurt was ready, in my mind, to be the CEO, even if in his mind, he you know, may have had some doubts here and there or, or just trying to get in the, in the mindset, but I think everyone knew he could do it. And if you look at how our business has grown from 2015 till now, you can tell that he did and he continues to do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was tough. Uh, but our father, mother really set us up for success. And luckily the three of us um, really do communicate and care about each other. And we want to see the business move forward as well. Yeah, and it was not an easy time, I'm sure. And there's always challenges. You guys are making it sound like you were able to work through those challenges really, really well. You're a strong family and that foundation was great. I mean, I talked to other family business leaders on this show where they don't want to be in the same room for Thanksgiving dinner, right? They don't want to be talking business on a Friday night. And, and that strikes me that your family culture is, is different than that. But I'm, again, I'm sure just sort of rewinding in that time and thereafter, there were challenges, whether it's challenges within the family or challenges within the business, customer communications, you know, what have you. I was just curious just to go around and maybe Jenna, we'll start with you. You know, what do you recall from that time? You were 29 and you were probably newer into the company and but what are your memories from that time of something that was pretty challenging that you had to deal with yeah so i was getting married in, in 2015 i got married um in september of 2015 so for me it was uh it was a bit challenging in that it was supposed to be the happiest point in my life um and it 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 also was a really uh, difficult point in my life and i was lucky to have an amazing maid of honor and my sister and my mother and my brother who all just came around and just made sure that it was special for me um, and a really joyous occasion. Um, but that was extremely uh, difficult. Uh, I still have trouble, you know, when you, you go to another wedding and you see the, uh, the daughter father dance, it always, you know, gets me a little bit. Um, but that was a very difficult uh, thing for me just because it's, it's such a momentous occasion. And our father, was the life of the party. Um, and so for me, you know, the hardest things are the big events, the big, fun, exciting events. Those are the times where, you know, I miss him the most because it's like, oh, he would have made this better. And unfortunately he wasn't able to um, physically join my wedding because he was in the hospital room. Um, and so that you know, was a bit of a challenge, but really, I mean, I go back to my comment before on the work front, I really had a lot of confidence in our management team and um, they really helped, I think me and helped our whole family be able to focus on, um, you know, our father and, um, and during that time. Yeah. And Kristen, how about for you? Yeah, for me, again, it was, uh, I'd say the challenges were more personal. You know, I had, like I said, I have, I had three children, have three children, my oldest, um, actually has a special need. So, you know, I was working through just having three young kids, one with a special need, um, you know, also 
you know, diving into the medical side of what was going on with our father, you know, we didn't tell people for a couple months um, because he was so adamant that he was going to get better um, that we were just kind of waiting until we were on the other side. So, you know, he was, you know, in the hospital, people didn't know it. We were working from the hospital. We would go sit by his bedside, do work. I mean, I can remember having business meetings there, um, you know, just working through it with him. So I I guess the hardest part for me is I never actually thought he was going to be gone. You know, he just had such a good attitude about it. So, and I didn't know exactly how to work that through with my kids, but in the end, you know, it all worked out and um, I did my best, but it was hard to see my sister um, go through what she was going through with the wedding, you know, um, you know, my dad watched it. Luckily you talk about technology. Uh, my brother-in-law held the phone up, uh, the whole time she was getting married and he watched it via Skype. The, uh, the hospital let them bring in a big screen TV and his brother and his sister were right there next to him. Oh, that's nice. So that was pretty awesome. That is um, awesome. But yeah, I'd say the challenge was definitely more on the personal side. Uh, on the business side, you know, we we felt confident. We really felt confident that no matter what happened, we were gonna we were gonna be okay. And you know, with Kurt being the vice president of sales and us already having so many amazing executives, a lot of those relationships were already there. So. Yeah. So Kurt, let's have you answer this in terms of challenges. I know you addressed a little bit before. How did you build that confidence that, hey, I got the baton now. I I can do this. Yeah, well, much like what Kristen said, uh, big personal challenge. When you lose your your best friend, your mentor, your father, I mean, that's that is not easy to overcome. On the business front, as I knew that was going to become that it was going to happen, that that time was going to happen, and I was put into the role. I had worked for four of our vice presidents through my career. So I had built relationships with them, and I knew them as as my manager and my, my leaders and mentors over that time. So each one of those executives uh, I went to, and I said, look, I understand. I mean, Kurt has been this wonderful visionary leader if it's too much for you and you want to go do something else, I totally get that. I just, I just want to know where you stand. And each one of them thankfully said, Kurt, if you're in, I'm in. I said, all right, well, I'm in. And getting that commitment one by one to the future where we're headed. And I was very clear with them. I said, I don't have all the answers. The, the training wheels are off for all of us. There's no one to go to because Kurt was kind of one of those people you could go to and no matter how bad it was or what the issue was, he would provide a pretty good solution or path forward. I said, I don't have all the answers, but we have the answers collectively. You know, we can work through anything. And that's really what we've done. And we've added on some additional leaders uh, from the outside, which are just phenomenal. They've worked right in. I think the key thing when you're trying to build a strong executive team in a family business, there can't be family on one side and then executive team on the other side it's it's one group so we three here are part of that executive team but i want uh, a non-family executive to feel exactly the same and treated the same as a family member who's an executive that's that's really really important so that they are part they know that they're part of uh, the, the company family and we try and make it an overall corporate family Well, that's a good segue to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is values. I mean, I worked in a third generation company and values were really, really important to the family. And you you could tell that over their 120 year history that had spilled over into the company culture, it was definitely part of it. I would guess that your spirit values, while Kristen had mentioned that they had come from employees, but maybe they're influenced by you know, the culture of your family over the generations. So I wanted to ask a couple of questions about that. Have you guys each take a, you know, a perspective on it, but Kurt, let's start with you and talk about the pandemic because I, it's not easy to have gone through and what we're still going through as a society and business community. And I wonder though about your company values, your spirit values, how that has helped 
the company and your people and your customers get through this challenging time? The pandemic has definitely been a challenging time. I mean, unlike anything ever that I, anything that I have seen, uh, very early on, we set up something we call our incident command team. So as part of our disaster recovery protocol, we have a group of key executives across the commercial side, the IT side, facilities, operations, and we were meeting weekly, then we were meeting every single day, sometimes Saturdays, Sundays, trying to set up the right protocols, trying to set up cleaning, uh, what are people, masks, social distancing. And through that, I think all companies have had to make difficult decisions, people on site, people off site. What, what's the policy when someone's on quarantine for COVID? Are they going to get paid? Are they not going to get paid? And every decision we've made through this pandemic we've put through the spirit values up against the spirit values to say, is this in line with our value system? Are we doing the right things for our team members? And I think through that, it has really allowed both the leaders, but also just all of our team members to have more trust in the company and more trust and solidification of those values to say, yeah, this is a company that, I want to work for and work with because even when sales drop 50 percent which which happened to us uh, the first couple months of the pandemic that we didn't just say okay 50 percent drop in sales now we're gonna have to lay off a bunch of people our whole our whole objective was let's keep this team together and let's do it in a positive way how about your memories from this time kristen yeah, well, I ran and still do um, as the head of the ICT, and um, it was challenging. Um, you know, it was very challenging. I spent a lot of time uh, researching, looking into things, but my goal, just like everyone else's, was to keep people employed, keep them safe, and continue to move the business forward. And I can remember when they put down um, the lockdown and we thought we were going to have to close our doors. And I can remember getting together on the weekend with the executive team and really just going back and forth on, you know, what are we going to do? And realizing that we were an essential business and we had many customers who needed us and who were asking and making sure we were staying open and, and we were lucky, we were lucky we, we were able to stay open through that time. Uh, we were lucky to be an essential business. We were lucky to keep all of our team members employed uh, with healthcare, paychecks coming in the door and, and safe, you know, um, but it definitely was challenging. And those values, like I said, you know, every decision we made, we would reference them, we would talk about them. Is this in line with our spirit values? Are we doing the right thing with our spirit values? And, you know, you don't know the story of the spirit values and, and it is, it's a longer story, but in the end, you know, we were trying to come up with maybe an acronym and we had S P I R I and Jenna and I were with our father down in our, our conference room. Everyone had left. We were coming back the next day to finalize the values. And we were kind of looking at them and I was saying, Jenna, an acronym, you know, you're a better speller than me, help me out. And so she started looking at the values and she kind of, you know, started wordsmithing and she goes, well, you know, if there was a T on here, it would be spirit. And at that moment in time, my father, he stood up in the air, he goes, yes, yes. He goes, I, he goes, I have kept my mouth shut for the past year. I have let everyone talk about their values and what they mean to them and why they mean it to them. He goes, but T, team, that's my value. I'm picking the last value. It's team. And really that is how spirit came together. And that was who he was. And that is who we are. So that's what got us through the pandemic. It was that T, it was that team. You know, that's what got us through. And, and to me, you know, while it's been tough on everyone, I think there are a lot of silver linings um, that are coming out of this that people will realize when they look back. And, and for me, keeping the team together was definitely one of those. 
That's an awesome story about your dad. <laughs> Anyone watching great. this video on YouTube is going to see how expressive you were when you <laughs> talked about your dad raising your hands in the air like he did. That's awesome. He did. And he was screaming. He was so excited. He was so, so excited. And the timing was good too for him. And Jenna, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, Kurt and Kristen did such a good time uh, talking about the values and, and, and how we uh, transition as a company. I'm going to take a little bit of a, a personal side here, which is I had a child uh, in December of 2019. My first day back from maternity leave was March 16th. So I come into the office and I'm excited. I'm talking to everyone. Hey, it's so good to be back. I missed you. I missed you. At the end of the day, I'm like, okay, so everyone's going to take their stuff home with them. We're going <laughs> to oh be, uh, we're going to be at home for two weeks, you know, to reduce the curve, but then we'll get back into it. So I came right back into this fresh off of maternity leave at home with a newborn. Um, not long after that, my husband is an entrepreneur. He works in real estate. They shut down real estate. So we're just adapting. And that was one of the biggest things that I've learned over this period is, is about being adaptable and watching myself and others just be adaptable. I know I found silver linings with not having to maybe take a shower every day and get yourself all pretty and go to work in the hour commute, right? So what am I doing? Well, I'm up at 4 a.m. or 6 a.m. on a call with, with our UK office or with our China office. And through this uh, pandemic, we were implementing a, a new ERP system. So I think the this technology such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams has really allowed for our global company to feel even more global than it already felt. I mean, I feel talking to a counterpart in our UK office versus talking to a counterpart in our US office when you're working from home, it's exactly the same. And so that's that's been a really interesting aspect of the pandemic is how we've actually come, I think, in a lot of ways closer and more together as a team through technology and through embracing this technology. Um, so I found those silver lines. Yeah, I do miss being in the office. I'm, I'm in the office today. I miss seeing my colleagues. I miss, I miss, I definitely miss those aspects of it. But when you're, when you're uh, put to the test with something like a pandemic, it is, it's great to be adaptable and, and to try to find you know, those benefits where they are. Yeah, definitely. So I just wanted to add, if I could add one thing. Yeah. Kristen said uh, she's head of the instant command team. I mean, I, I got to tell you, I mean, Kristen was phenomenal throughout this pandemic. I mean, she just took on, it's probably taken years off of her life, but she has taken on so much, always nonstop worrying about team member safety, worrying about how the person's going to get paid, how are they going to be able to take care of their family. And it is just, I mean, it's been tremendous to watch. I'm so thankful to have her on board. But Kristen and our, our general counsel, her name's Stacey Beal, they, they have gone above and beyond. And it's been, I mean, I told Kristen, I said, this is, this is actually the year of Kristen because uh, it really has changed perception. So Kristen had a, a flexible arrangement before where she would work in the office some days a week and at home some days a week. And you know, I always saw that as like, oh, that's, that's a great benefit. You're working from home. I, in some ways, in my mind, it was easier to work from home. Having now seen what it's like working from home and seeing and people on video now, I mean, actually, you get a really good look into their lives, the challenges they deal with, the, the background noise, the family members. I mean, there's so many pulls on people's time that it's totally changed my perception of people that are working from home or working from the office. And, and thankfully, even though we had to send about half of our employees off site for the last year, we haven't missed a beat. And that's, that's been great. And so just a big thank you to Kristen. Kudos to you guys. And I love how you even just recognizing each other in this, there's probably people listening. They're like, Oh damn, I can't even have a good conversation with my, you know, with my brother-in-law over a beer and they're, they're in business, you know, so highly functional. This is amazing. <laughs> so I'm going to tee up a question to you guys and give you each kind of a second to think about it. But if this podcast was a message in a bottle and there's something that you would say to the next generation, who's not yet leading the company, what would that be? Do you want me? I, I can start. Give them time to think. My message, my message would really be: don't wait to have the conversations that need to be had. You know, don't wait. It's never too early to start talking about 
succession and the what ifs, because you don't know when those what ifs are going to happen. And sometimes the conversations that are maybe that there's a lot of anxiety around having, once you have them, once you get those issues out in the open, once you start talking about it, that's when you find very creative and unique solutions. And there's a lot of great expertise. There's a lot of people out there that specialize in this. The consultants, advisors, I mean, talk to them, have the conversations. They, they have seen a lot of this before. And so for us, that was really a big boost. And it is today as we're going through kind of our next round of estate planning, succession planning. Uh, there's great resources out there. And if you're just willing to put yourself out there and maybe be a little bit vulnerable as to here's our situation, here's some of the challenges we're dealing with, people want to help. Yeah, so you'd be looking for that help and be open to it and have those tough conversations um, more proactively. Uh, Jenna, how about for you? Yeah, so what I would say is that you have to put your family first. Um, that you know, the relationships that you have with your siblings or your parents, um, hopefully my son's going to listen to this and, and be nice to me, but you know, you have to put those first. Those are more important than anything else. Um, and uh, you just got to care about the human side, right? You can get into the business and you start talking business and you can kind of, I know I can, you know, uh, start to be very, um, you know, logical about things, uh, but you got to, the human side so important and, and through everything, you know, the, you're, you only have one family, you got to take care of them, you got to love them. And then that's the most important thing. Thank you. And Kristen? Yeah, for me, you know, all those things they said, I agree with, but definitely the communication and just being able to understand that you have weaknesses and so do the others in your family. And if you dwell on those, you're never gonna move forward. And you really need to think about people's strengths and how to push them forward and help them succeed. Um, because at the end of the day, you only have one life, you only have one family. And if you have the opportunity to be in business with those same people, you can make it successful, but it's all about how you approach it. And I can tell you that, you know, I worked with my dad, like I said, for 10 years, hand in hand. He was my boss um, for nine of the 10 years, my direct boss and mentor. Um, and, you know, there were days that he made me crazy, you know, um, but when I look back on it, his strengths, what I learned, the opportunity that I had to spend that time with him was amazing. And people who get into business with their families, if it's all about tit for tat, who gets this, who gets that, you're never going to look back on it and feel great. You need to come together as a team and you need to look at people's strengths and you need to help them be successful. And sometimes that comes with really hard conversations. But if you don't do that communication, if you don't have those hard conversations, if you're not honest, um, and you don't look at yourself in the mirror, then you will never move forward. Because just like any great leader, if you don't learn, if you don't educate yourself, if you don't learn how to change, you will stay stagnant. You know, if you look at any great leader out there, they continue to educate themselves. They look at their weaknesses. They take advice from others um, and they make adjustments. And so you have to do the same thing when it comes to your family members. You know, they're just as important as anyone else's advice you're going to get uh, moving forward to be successful. So I always ask my guests if they have a favorite quote, which starts to signal the end of the episode. So I'm going to do that with each of you to share something about leadership or entrepreneurship, if you have a favorite quote. So Jenna, let's start with you. Quote that always comes to, to mind is uh, is actually uh, my father's quote, you know, which is work hard, play hard. And I know it's not just his quote. I mean, a lot of people use that one, but that is, you know, kind of the philosophy on how we built this business and, and how we continue to drive this business. You got to have fun. You know, I mean, life is short. You've got to love what you do and you got to have fun when you're doing it. So, you know, work your ass off, but have a great time too. Um, and that's what I would say. Okay. And Kristen? Uh, yeah, for me, you know, I like it. They say leaders create leaders, not followers. 
And I think that what you find is that people who are really great leaders, they make sure and mentor others to be really amazing leaders. Um, because the only way to move forward is to replace yourself. So that's something that I really, um, I really value. Kurt, how about yours? Uh, I go back to uh, Teddy Roosevelt and his quote about the man or woman in the arena. And then it's, you know, it's not the critic on the sidelines. It's not their opinion that matters. It's the person who's daring greatly, who's courageous, who's getting kicked and knocked down and getting back up and continues to go. Because when you look at the, any entrepreneur and, and certainly our business and our family story, it sounds, it sounds a, a very positive here, a lot of great things, but over 67 years, I mean, there have been so many tough setbacks, things, points where it's like, can we go on? Can we get through this? And we just, we just find ways. We find ways and we find ways together. And at the end of the day, I don't think it matters so much what you do, whether you love what you're doing or not, for me has to do with who you're doing it with and how you're doing it. And for us, with our family, with our executive team and our, our awesome organization and doing it uh, with our spirit values in mind, that's been, been tremendous for us. So an open question for any of you or all of you would be, if there's anything I didn't ask you about that you wanted to share, what would that be? One thing I'd just like to share for a minute, because I think it's so important, you, you did mention it, but just our, our mother and her importance in this whole story. So yes, our father was a visionary leader, but for me, I can speak for myself. The person that gave me confidence, the person that built me up throughout my, my life to be successful, and the person who really made sure that while she was killing herself in the business, but also that I would have a birthday cake as soon as I woke up. It was, it was my mother and she's just been this awesome force for good. And she's so passionate about sustainability and making positive changes that she's gotten us to where we are today. She's been a big part of that. And she's also going to be a big part of our future and, and helping us with the future direction and implementing a number of great uh, sustainability initiatives. Yeah. The one thing that I would also say, and I know uh, this, you know, is about succession planning and success, succession stories is, and I know we touched on this a little bit, but we really did spend many, many years uh, going through planning and estate planning, su succession planning um, as mother, father, and the three of us. I mean, we spent a lot of time on that. So, you know, when we're talking today about how easy the transition was, it came with 10, 15 years of us really, you know, meeting a couple times a year, talking to outside consultants, um, you know, having emotional discussions. Um, there was a lot that went into it. And I think that, you know, again, we were really lucky, but the only reason that we were really lucky is because we started planning well in advance. And, you know, if you don't, it's not always going to be like that. So like Kurt and Jenna has said, and you've said, you know, utilize your outside resources and get a plan together. Even if it's not a perfect plan, um, get a plan because a plan is better than no plan. Uh, and I think that's really in people, important for people to know. Yeah, absolutely. Jenna, your thoughts? Yeah, what I would add is I think we talked a lot about, you know, what we what we did as a family. Um, and one of the pieces maybe we left out was these great resources that we've had um, through business advisors and through forums. Um, you know, myself, Kurt and Kristen are each at least in one uh, business forum where we're working with other family business owners. And, and, and we are talking about, you know, a lot of the trials and tribulations that we deal with uh, that are unique to family businesses and and those forums and the and the advice that we're getting from those individuals has just been so critical to our success and our succession planning i know my father was in a, a forum and that's how he kind of got the idea and the push to really start our our family planning meetings um, so i think you know for your listeners i would say if you're trying to figure out how do you get started it definitely doesn't need to be all on you, right? Join 
join an organization um, for your industry or your or a family business organization and meet with other people. Find out what they're doing. Find out what went well and find out what did not go well because those are all really uh, critical. So I just, you know, I think a big thanks to anyone who's in my forums and, and my brother and sister's forums and my, my parents' forums because they've definitely helped us be successful. Yeah, you've all had so much support, which is, you can tell, I can just tell it's really had its benefit for all of you. Kurt, I'm sorry, were you going to say something? I just completely agree. Completely agree on the forum conversation. Yep. So on that note, if there's people listening that want to connect with you or find your company, Kurt, what's the best way for them to find you online? Sure. You can go to our website, www.lester.com, and you can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, I think I speak for the three of us. We'd love for you to connect with us personally or connect with the organization. Perfect. It's been a real pleasure, Kurt, Kristen, and Jenna, to talk with all of you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. And it's really, it's in inspiring to see all of you together and how you really value each other. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, this has been a really fun experience. It has. Really appreciate the offer. My objective is for you to have a lucrative and successful succession. If you want to understand the value of your company today, the potential net proceeds of a transaction, and your financial needs after you leave the business, that's a great place to start. The sooner you understand these numbers, the more time you'll have to close the gap if there is one. Take the next step by requesting an initial meeting to begin planning for your business transition and strategic exit today. Request a call with me by visiting smalldotbig.com. That's smalldotbig.com. I look forward to speaking with you.